Want to learn engineering and science? Well, you've tuned in to the right channel. Hit subscribe and press the bell icon and never miss an update from us. Ever since humans inhabited Earth, there has been a curiosity to understand the environment and the subsequent laws which govern it. And it is in this quest for knowledge, questions started to pop up in minds of different people. As in, hey, why do objects fall onto the ground? What happens when you push an object? Does it move? Or does it simply maintain its state of rest? Let's take a look at the aspect of motion. Let's say that the object has moved, then again a question might pop up. How fast is the object moving? Or how long is it going to take for the object to reach a certain destination? Interesting, isn't it? Now let's take a look at this from a different perspective. Let's assume that the object simply maintains its state of rest. Again a question may tinkle in our mind as to what is preventing the object to break loose or move in a certain direction. Well, the series of questions is unending. And humans, you know, we've been curious enough to consistently answer these questions. And this has led to the evolution of human race from living and hunting in jungles to where we are right now. So if you want to know all these answers, then you've tuned in to the right channel. This is Manas Patnak and welcome to my new lecture series on engineering mechanics. And in today's class, we'll talk about what exactly mechanics is, its classification, a brief history of the major breakthroughs, and finally, the six fundamental principles upon which this entire subject has been structured. So let's start by understanding what is mechanics. Well, mechanics essentially provides us the tools to predict the future with respect to our present. Let's say that an object is at rest. Then we're going to say that the net force acting on it will be equal to zero. And for an object in motion, the net force is a product of mass and acceleration. We've got laws of motion. Then we've got the impulse and momentum theory. And we also learn about friction. These are all tools by the help of which we can actually predict the future in the form of velocity, acceleration, the direction of motion or pathway, whatever you can see, and frictional force, etc. Now, let me demonstrate as to what this is all about. And then we'll sort of make a definition out of it. For example, there is a guy holding a tennis ball and then he throws it with all the power that he has. And the ball goes up and finally hits the ground. So what can mechanics tell us about this entire event? Well, it can help us in a number of ways. If we know the initial velocity with which the ball was released, we can work out the maximum horizontal distance it can travel, the maximum height the ball attains, and also, we can frame an equation of the trajectory. So let's take up one more example. So here is a guy who is trying to push this box forward, but unfortunately the box does not move. Now he keeps on applying more and more force, but still the box is adamant. It does not move. Why? Can mechanics help us in understanding as to why the box does not move? Well, yes, mechanics surely can. And the reason being very simple, it's all because of this frictional force, okay? This frictional force, small f, being far too great than the applied force f. So this is the applied force, and this over here represents the frictional force. Now let's assume that this man over here is replaced by the incredible Hulk. And Mr. Hulk exerts a force of such magnitude, which is far, far greater than this frictional force. That means the applied force will be far too greater than the frictional force. And when that happens, the box breaks loose and finally sets itself into motion. So that's the skill set and that's the power that you're going to have once you have gone through the course of engineering mechanics. Now that we've seen different examples till now, we'll try to frame a better definition of engineering mechanics. Well, it goes like this. Mechanics essentially can be defined as that science which describes and predicts the conditions of rest or motion of bodies when a certain amount of load is applied onto it. Okay, so that's how we define engineering mechanics. And I'm sure that you guys must have got a very good idea as to what this subject has to offer. Now, let's take this session forward and we shall discuss the classification of engineering mechanics. All right, so it has been essentially divided into three parts. Part number one is what is known as mechanics of rigid bodies. And this is something that this course is all about. Okay, now here, we're going to be assuming that the shape and size of the object does not change. Doesn't matter how much force you apply, the shape and size of the object remains intact. No change whatsoever. Then we come 
to mechanics of deformable bodies. Now, this particular course is also known as the mechanics of solids and sometimes we also call it as the strength of materials. Now, this is a very important subject in mechanical and civil engineering, all right, a third semester subject probably or a fourth semester subject. Anyways, now in this, we assume that if you, if you apply some amount of force, then there is going to be some sort of deformation. Now, let's take the example of this chalk. What happens if I try to compress this chalk in this direction, in the y-axis direction, okay? There will be some sort of deformation. The length of the chalk will reduce, okay? So, if a deformation is caused by a certain amount of force, then that particular case falls in the category of mechanics of deformable bodies or mechanics of solids for that matter. And then finally, we've got mechanics of fluids. This is where we study the forces and flow within fluids. Now, before I tell you the six fundamental principles on which this subject is entirely based, let me take you on a brief tour of the major events that have happened so far in mechanics. And that's what I call the timeline of mechanics. Okay, so the study of mechanics dates back to the time of Aristotle and Archimedes. I mean, way, way back before the Christian era. But one has to wait until Newton, okay, to find a satisfactory formulation of its fundamental principles, which were later published in a book called Principia or Principia and these principles were later expressed in a very sort of modified form by T.L. Lambert, Lagrange and Hamilton. The validity of these principles remain unchallenged. However, until 1905 when Einstein formulated his theory of relativity and his theory was absolutely brilliant and it was applicable on a more broader sense. Einstein stated and I quote that when the speed of objects approach the speed of light or even gets closer the laws of classical mechanics or what you know as Newtonian mechanics are no longer valid and that's where you've got to use Einstein's special theory of relativity now let me go ahead and educate you more on this aspect okay now this is related to the size of the object it says if the size of the object is very small all right of the order of 10 raised to minus 9 meters then it falls under the category of quantum mechanics. And finally, if the object is very small and at the same time it travels at the speed of light or it's very close to the speed of light, then that particular category is what you know as quantum field theory. So essentially, we can say Newtonian mechanics has some limitations in a sense that the object size should be very, very large, okay, than 10 raised to minus 9 meters and its speed should be very, very small compared to that of the speed of light. But even then, Newtonian mechanics still remains the basis for today's modern-day engineering sciences.